there is something that matters even more. That is believing in yourself. Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. And that's what is the theme of today is let's look for something more than what we know as on today. This is a journey of a congenital heart disease. The first steam engine which was invented way back almost 100 years down the line. So what I'm going to talk about today is just a basics of congenital heart disease. And this slide tells you aptly this particular phenomena. The diagnosis of congenital heart disease represents an epitome of applied clinical knowledge. When correct inferences are drawn from accurate observations, the diagnoses are made with gratifying frequencies. Because no structure comes as labeled as LV, LA, RV, RA. We have to identify their structures because of their morphological presentations. Next is, we have to understand the approach to congenital heart disease in the form that is fetal or perinatal circulation. Intercardiac pressures, I'll request everybody to just concentrate. I'll give you a video recording for everything. Fetal and perinatal circulations, intracardiac pressure, sequential approach, important consideration before starting doing an echo examination of pediatric population. Then what is the classification and how to sedate and whether to sedate or not to sedate and how we can sedate them if it's required. That is the journey from fetal, perinatal, adult circulation. This is first slide which talks about a fetal circulation. Because when we get a child outside, it's the just form for fetus to a neonatal circulation. There's something which is transforming in that particular patients. If I have to look at this slide, the most important part of this fetal circulation is, look, this part of placenta, can I have a pointer, Herbans? This part of a placenta, which is a site for exchange of oxygenations. This is the most important thing that umbilical arteries carry the bad blood or deoxygenated blood. Like coronary artery, they supply during diastole. This is the one artery which supplies the deoxygenated blood to placenta and from placenta it gets oxygenated and converts to an oxygenated blood going towards the heart via liver. And in fetal circulation, this does not go through the liver point. It is passes through a ductus venosus. So it bypasses liver and straightway goes to a, through ductus venosus to right side of the heart. And now in right side of the heart, the RV and the pulmonic arteries, they are underdeveloped because there is no lung circulation. There is no lung oxygenation. What does the do God has done? It has made a foramen flap which directs all this blood from right atrium to left atrium. And how does this direct? If you remember, we talk of a eustachian valve, we talk of a carrying network. This is a membrane which is attached to the inferior margin of an IVC, directing blood from IVC directly to the fossa valis and then to the left atrium. Majority of blood goes to left atrium, then to left ventricle, and then goes to the brain. And 95% or 85% of blood goes to the brain. The, by the time the child, the child is developed, his brain has completely developed. Rest of the 10 to 15% of the blood goes to the right ventricle. And now the lungs are not there. So what we have? We have a ductus arteriosus. And this directs the blood from ductus arteriosus to descending aorta. So how many places there shunts are there? One shunt at placenta, second ductus venosus, third at the level of foramen ovale, and fourth is the ductus arteriosus. So when the child is born, we have to take all these things into consideration, saying that all these factors could be present when the child is born. Is that right? Now let's look what exactly happens when the child is born. The fetal circulation is dependent, differ from adult circulation in the fact the fetus is dependent on placenta where the adult is dependent on lungs for oxygenation. 
shunts, as I said, placenta, foramen ovale, ductus arteriosus, ductus venous nodosus, and the chambers of the cardiac dimensions love to see only 15% of blood and pulmonary artery are very small. And you must have heard in your clinical practice when you were doing the post graduations or uh, MBBS, like as the child is born, we often hear a murmur. And what is that murmur? Was that was pulmonary super. Because the arteries are not adjusted to the kind of a blood which is being exposed suddenly to these pulmonic arteries. And the best example we can see in our life is when heavy rain happens on the top of your roof. And you see a gushing of a water from that small pipe. That pipe is not tuned to that large amount of water. And that you hear a murmur or that you hear a sound, it is similar we can compare with the pulmonic arteries. It's not that pulmonic arteries are small. It's not that they are stenotic, but the amount of blood which is suddenly exposed to spalmonic artery, they are disproportionate. So RVRA, they are predominantly larger than LV. RV pressures are equivalent to LV pressure, hence the child is born with what? RVVV majority of times. So if you look at an ECG saying RVV is present in a neonate, you just give a breathing time for that patient. Look, it could be a normal phenomenon. How long it persists? Almost three months. Is that right? You talk it? Approximately three months. Now, changes in circulation after birth. Primary exchange circulation after birth is shift of blood flow from gas exchange to placenta to lungs. Interruption of umbilical cord results in increased systemic vascular resistance as a result of closure of very low placental flow. Closure of ductus venosus due to lack of blood flow from the placenta. And this ductus venosus becomes what? Ligament of TDs in adulthoods or in neonates. Lung expansion results in falling, reduction in pulmonary vascular resistance, increase in pulmonic varial flow, fall of pulmonary artery pressure, and there is functional closure of foramen away. PDA closure due to increased arterial oxygenation. One important fact which is very, very important is the limbus which is blowing towards an LA during fetal circulation, like it's not that the foramen ovale is present only. If this is a foramen ovale, this is a limbus which is like that. If this is LA, this is RA. And this limbus comes and attaches over to foramen ovale to close this so-called fossa valis or a foramen ovale. So there's a potential gap always present during this particular place. And that's what we sometimes we say when the RA pressure goes up, the small amount of blood flow happens or a few such happens in left atrium. <coughs> now the next thing comes right side, decrease RA flow leads to closure of ductus venosus and reduce RA pressures, increase pulmonic flow leading to increased pulmonary artery pressures and in LA with increased LA pressures. So we are changing over from one circulation to other circulation during perinatal or peak. Now intracardiac pressure and saturation level which is very very important. Look if you look at the intracardiac pressure, RA pressure is almost negligible when the child is born. Some people say 0, some say 3, some say 5. There is a variability. RV pressure is almost 25 millimeters of mercury, but the LV pressure is 45 to 55 millimeter of mercury when the child or neonate is born. So you have to have an arterial cuff based on the size of the arm of a child. We have a three of them in our lab when we always measure a blood pressure of a neonate. <coughs> we don't use adult cuff. We have a three different size of a cuff to measure blood pressures or especially the systolic blood pressure. Then we have an LA pressure which is almost 5 to 8 millimeters of mercury. And these are very, very important. My saturation is close to 70% and this is close to 100% on the left hand side. Why we are talking of all these things is because during neonatal evaluations, we need to have a hemodynamic information and then we need to have an oxygenation levels. And I don't have to tell you, if I have a coaptation of iota, my lower limb pressure would be low. If I have got a left side a descending a coaptation of iota, distal to my proximal to left subclavian artery, I'll have a different pressures and a different saturation level in different arms. 
So we do utilize all these kind of a thing in our daily practice in our lives. Let's moving on to the sequential approach. We have to identify what? We have to identify visceral situs, atrial situs, atrial ventricular concordance, ventricular localization, and great articulations. These five things are very, very important for any evaluation of pediatric or congenital heart disease. How do we do it? That's the most important thing is we have to find visceral situs, then atrial situs, morphological and venous inflow pattern, then ventricular localization based on morphology D loop or L loop, <coughs> then atrial ventricular concordance based on apex axis, levocardia or dextrocardia, then great artery connections, we look at how they are connected to each other because all our subsequent presentation are based on these particular phenomena. Then last, starting from a visceral situs. This is a slide which talks about, this is a transducer point of a transducer. <clears throat> this is anterior, this is posterior. This is left, this is right. And the index marker is at 3 o'clock position. We are not parallel to the heart, we are perpendicular to the heart. <laughs> when we are perpendicular to the heart, this is spine. Left side is aorta and right side is IVC. That's a normal thing. So how do we look at it? Aja beta, blade job, either leg job. One of a G person can come forward, he can help me out. Leg job beta, bawa, leg job, fetch it. This is what the most important part for any diagnostic examination. And if the kid is a little bigger in size, we always put an ECG electrodes, always. I don't know, like many people, they do not use in neonates and other things, but we do use a lot of uh, time uh, electrodes in these kids. And in neonates, we have a special electrodes, not made like this, they are of a clothes, of fine clothes which can attach easily and a very small size, almost half of this and can be pulled back without rupturing the skin membranes. So very soft, uh, these things are present when we utilize this. That may be better, it could be. Now, think for it. What name is your Saima. S A I M A. S I A. We'll put a first name as uh, Saima. Sometimes like we are wasting time putting in all these kind of things over here. Zero one zero one two zero thirteen. Right? And we do have a height or weight so that we can calculate the G values when we are doing a pediatric echoes. So we do a G value this particular phenomena body surface area comes automatically and we can sit down on a computer put a G values of all these kids when we measure them what is their G value plus 2 bigger less than minus 2 is small hypo and hyper we will change the system start this is the G value so we are all set. ECG is right. Can we have bigger screen, man? Up screen ko bada karenge tabhi baat banegi. Battery se baat nahi banegi ye.
हमें नीचे का प्लेटफॉर्म नहीं दिखाना हमारा नीचे के प्लेटफॉर्म का कोई काम नहीं है हमारे पास नीचे So here is the transducer which I am going to use. It's about uh, six megahertz or five megahertz transducer, and this is an index marker of this. All of you must be using this. I don't have to tell about this index marker. Going to put a jelly on that, very small, and then I'm going to go perpendicular. Almost at three o'clock, I'm going to go perpendicular. Transducer. हरबंस गेन एडजस्ट करो So what we see over here is the spine in the below. Can show a point. Spine down, and then the structure which is pulsating is aorta, and we can switch on the colors in this. चाहिए उल्टा चाहिए पहले हमें स्क्रीन से चाहिए स्क्रीन से लाइव आप भेजोगे आप हमें उल्टा दे रहे हो 